Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Fixing Arsenal. In today's episode we're going to play my old team Sheffield United and we're also going to face Strasbourg in the group stage of the Europa League but we've got four fixtures to review since the last time we met. The first of which was a very comfortable 3-1 away victory against Burnley. Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang with a hat-trick. Kevin Long getting a late goal for Burnley, a bit of a consolation but a comfortable three points in the end. We then faced Strasbourg at home in the Europa League and we won this one 4-0. Aubameyang with two and Nicolas Pepe with two. We then faced Watford at home in the Premier League in what was a little bit more of an even game but we still ended up running out 3-0 winners. Alexander Lacazette picked up a few weak injuries so he is going to be missing for a good number of games now. So Gabriel Martinelli actually came on and got himself a goal. Aubameyang and Nicolas Pepe with the others. And finally it was a 2-0 home, uh, not home, away victory against West Ham in the League Cup. We did rotate slightly for this one. Reese Nelson coming in. Uh, Nicholas Pepe and Gabriel Martinelli stepping up to start up front with Aubameyang taking a rest in this one. And comfortably through to the fifth round. Now the Premier League table is definitely starting to get interesting. Liverpool ended up falling to defeat against Leicester at home. So the po points gap has dropped to two points. We now sit in second. Two points behind Liverpool. One point ahead of Leicester. And two points ahead of Manchester United. West Ham still performing pretty well in fifth place. And Spurs currently sitting in 6th. Chelsea and Manchester City having very poor seasons for the first season in FM. Man City are usually the ones challenging Liverpool for the title. But as you can see, Aubameyang is the standout player. Getting 12 goals already in 10 Premier League games. Sitting comfortably top of the goal scoring charts. And the same can be said about the average ratings. In terms of the Europa League group then, we sit top comfortably. 3 wins out of 3. 9 points, 5 points ahead of both Feyenoord and Dynamo. And today... In the first game, not the first game, the second game, we've got Strasbourg away from home. But the first game is against Sheffield United, who have five wins and five defeats in ten games. They do not draw. Here comes a 1-1 draw. So as you can see, then Alexander Lacazette here at the bottom is still currently injured. He's out for another six days to two weeks. So he is not starting today. Martinelli is going to replace him starting up top. That is a major issue for me in terms of our strength and depth. Martinelli is the next player who comes in at striker and whilst he's got some potential to grow and he definitely could improve in the future he's not someone i want coming in to replace lacazette or Aubameyang. so in january we will be looking for a third choice striker but this will be the rest of the lineup burnt leno and gold bellerin socrates and david louise at the back with thomas party and kalasnac as defensive midfield and left wing back respectively lucas terrera in the center with nicholas pepe on the right hand side mesut ozil in behind the aforementioned Aubameyang and Martinelli. So Sheffield United basically play pretty much the formation we played with them, the 5-2-1-2. Um, Oliver McBurney and Billy Shop up top, John Fleck, Oliver Norwood, bring back great memories, George Baldock, absolutely fantastic player, Jill Diaz, where is Ender Stevens? He must be injured, that's the only possible explanation. Um, John Egan, O'Connell, Phil Jagielka, currently manager in my save of Sheffield United, of Sheffield United, and Dean Henderson in goal. They are doing okay. I think they were sitting in 12th on uh, 15 points. So they're not doing too badly. So it would be a good win for us this away from home. But I am expecting it. 30 seconds in we have our first highlight of the game. Nicholas Pepe with a free kick. And that goes behind for a corner. Is this actually going to be a highlight? It might have just been a continuation from the kickoff. Mesut Ozil plays it in. It's cleared by John Egan. And then Norwood. And is that going to be that? It was. But there's another one. Hot 30 seconds later, Bellerin plays the ball in. It's cleared by George Baldock, but Thomas Partey can keep it in Arsenal's possession. We go all the way back. Some possession in the uh, in our third. Uh, finally finds its way to Nicholas Pepe in the final third. And he goes for goal. Dean Henderson with a decent save. And Martinelli just runs it out of play. The rest of the first half is just sort of ticking away. We do have a corner. Mesut Ozil plays it in. Who or Bamian gets his head in it, but it's a good save by Dean Henderson. The highlight continues though. Nicholas Pepe has managed to get himself in behind and he gets his 8th goal of the season and puts us 1-0 up against Sheffield United 36 minutes in. It hasn't been a convincing first half, I'll not lie. We're not playing particularly well. But a good header from Thomas Partey finds Martinelli who plays a lovely little through ball for Pepe whose first touch absolutely does O'Connell at the back for Sheffield United and a good finish to make it 1-0. Another highlight now, 38 minutes in. Sheffield United clear but only as far as Bellerin. Who enjoys going back all the way to Leno? And Ozil switches the play to Pepe on the right-hand side. He gives the ball away. And Sheffield United, whilst they are winning the ball back occasionally, they're definitely not keeping it as it falls its way back to Pepe. And Martinelli goes for goal. And it goes just over. 
And there we have it for the first half. Sheffield United nil, Arsenal 1. Not a great performance by us so far, but fighting ourselves 1-0 up is not too bad. They are going to have to come at us um, more in the second half if they want to get anything in this game. 29% possession for them so far. It's not ideal for any team, never mind one like Sheffield United. But they do have a corner. Aubameyang, oh my god, Aubameyang. Almost gifted Oliver McBurney a goal there. With half an hour remaining, we will look to get Kalasnach off for Kieran Tini. Kalasnach always knackered uh, playing left wing back, unfortunately. So it's a good job we have two strong left wing backs to be able to rotate effectively between the two. As we continue with this highlight now, Kalasnach hasn't went off yet. Can he get himself an assist? He plays it in. It's cleared by Jill Diaz. Hector Bellerin, though, can keep the ball alive. And he his cross hits John Fleck first time and he can counter for Sheffield United now. They've got plenty of men forward. And uh, Norwood finds McBurney to John Fleck to Diaz. Can we win this ball back and count ourselves? We can't. Billy Sharp goes for the header and it goes just over. 25 minutes to go now. It's another highlight and it looks like it's going to be another Sheffield United chance. Baldock plays the ball in. Jill Diaz with a strike. And Jill Diaz's first goal of the season is a pretty special one. We criticised him early on for taking Ender Stevens spot. And he's just proved me absolutely wrong here. George Baldock, some good work on this right hand side with Lundstrom. To get himself in a little bit of an opening. The ball's played in. It finds its way to Diaz on the edge. And that is a hell of a finish. No chance for Burnt Leno. And with 25 minutes to go. We find ourselves down to 1-1. One, one, which would not be ideal whatsoever. Highlight now. Pepe with a free kick. It's played in. And Socrates at the back post. Gets his third goal of the season. And he puts us back in front. 2-1 there. The draw did not last long. Pepe with a great free kick. Socrates at the back post. Dean Henderson gets awfully close. To keeping that one out. But he can't do it. And can we hold on to this now, boys? We'll go back to a positive team mentality. We'll stick with this highlight, though. Thomas Partey finds Kieran Tini on the left-hand side. He gets past his man, and he goes for goal. A comfortable save in the end. The highlight does continue, though, so that Tini chance obviously wasn't what the football manager at match engine was wanting to show me. As Nicholas Pepe gets past his man on the right-hand side, he gets it in the box. It falls to Hector Bellerin right by the byline, and he finds Kieran Tini at the back post. And our back post crosses OP. Uh, we've just seen two back post cross goals with headers at the back post, resulting in goals. It's not something I say pretty often, but I'm happy to see it now. Hector Bellerin with a great cross back post. The wing backs combining, and Dean Henderson should probably do a little bit better with this one. Kieran Tini's second goal of the season, probably putting the game beyond doubt now. And with only 12 or so minutes to go, we'll get Mal Quay on for Hector Bellerin, and we'll get Nicholas Pepe off as well. We'll get Reese Nelson on for him on that right hand side. Only 40, uh, 30 seconds or so remain. Reese Nelson's in behind. He goes for goal and it goes just wide. And there we have it. Sheffield United 1, Arsenal 3. A very, very good performance and a good three points. It did look a little bit edgy there when Jill Diaz managed to equalise for Sheffield United. But thankfully the boys have stood up and been countered. And we managed to get the win and keep the pressure up on Liverpool who did win themselves. Who did they actually play? They beat, they beat West Ham. 93rd minute Sadio Mane a goal. West Ham, you could have done us a read favour there but... Unfortunately, it wasn't a B, so we will see you at the Strasbourg game. So with us sitting comfortably top of our Europa League group, I've decided to play a pretty rotated side. And we'll see some of the boys that we rarely ever see. Bert Leno will start in goal. Emiliano Martinez is not someone I'm interested in playing, really. Uh, Malqui comes in for Bellerin. Mustafi comes in and Chambers comes in as well to join him at centre-back. Socrates and David Luiz drop out. Have a little bit of a rest for today's game. Thomas Partey stays at defensive midfield. Uh, Kalasnach is going to get dropped for Kieran Tinney at left wing back. Matteo Guendouzi comes in in the central midfield role. Reese Nelson is going to start on that right hand side with Danny Sabellos in behind Martinelli, who's going to play up top by himself. And Emil Smith Rowe comes in on that left hand side. We'll see how these boys perform. If we get beat, we'll get beat. It is a little bit of a gamble, uh, especially when you're performing so well. I find in football manager form is, you know, it's key to morale and key to maintaining form. So it could be a little bit of a, a bad sign for me to play such a weak inside if we end up getting drawn or getting beat. But we should still have enough to be able to get past this Strasbourg side. They haven't done very well in our Europa League group whatsoever. And with those five points clear, it's worth the risk. Let's get the kick off. First highlight of the game, six minutes in. Guendouzi finds Martinelli, of course, up top by himself. He drives at the defence, gets challenged though. Reese Nelson keeps it alive. Malqui gets past his man. Black post. Emile Smith-Rowe is there. Is that going to be given offside? It is not. Emile Smith-Rowe gets his first goal of the season. One of his rare starts on the left-hand side. Um, see, the injury to Alexander Lacazette will mean Emile Smith-Rowe might get some more game time and we change the formation to adapt to him. But Malqui with the back post cross once again 
getting the goal, uh, the assist, and Emile Smith Rowe getting the goal. Another highlight now on the right hand side again, Nelson plays it in and falls to Emile Smith Rowe about 30 yards out. It's back to Sabellos. Back to Reese Nelson on the right hand side. Malqui, can he get the cross in again? He goes for Gwen Doozy. Nearly. Very nearly. 35 minutes in now, only 10 minutes remain in the second half. Malqui has the ball, finds Kieran Tini. That cannot be a highlight. It can't be. It wasn't. It's actually going to be a Strasbourg chance. He goes for goal. Ben Leno with a good save. We <laughs> somehow managed to get away with that. And that's it for the first half. We are looking pretty dominant in terms of the match stats. We haven't created too many opportunities though in the first half. But our boys are doing not so bad for being the second string side. Let's see how they do in the second half. Highlight now. 53 minutes in. It's Tierney with a throw in on the left hand side of Falsa Thomas Party. Back to Tierney. And Kieran Tierney gets his third goal of the season. He is definitely putting his claim for the first team spot ahead of Siad Kalasanacho. who's done okay at the beginning of the season. But Tierney. He has the potential to grow as well, which is something I'm very interested in. Sabellos finding party who finds it back to Kieran Tini. A first-time strike. Keeper should definitely do better with that one, but we don't care. Strasbourg nil, Arsenal 2. Another highlight now with Strasbourg, this time coming forward with Da Costa. M Mustafi gets in and gets a decent challenge in. Reese Nelson plays it back to Mustafi, and we are aware on this right-hand side with Martinelli. He's got options at the back post. He doesn't go for them. He goes for goal instead and goes wide. And with only 20 minutes or so remaining... We will look to get Thomas Partey off for Torreira, save his legs as he's a first team member of the squad. Everybody else is pretty much back up, so I don't mind them playing a little bit longer. We will take Tini off for Kolasinac as well, with the view of maybe starting Tini in the next game. Now, I don't know if this is a highlight or just because we're making substitutions, but Lala keeps it in on the right hand side, gets it in. Mathiba goes for goal there for Strasbourg, nearly getting one back. Only 17 minutes or so remaining now, Malqui bombing down that right hand side. The left back is struggling to keep up with him. He plays a back to Reese Nelson who's in the box. He goes for goal. Why? Why? Just not it across the box. You never know what might happen. Kolasinac now on the left hand side. Plays the ball in. Martinelli's there. He hits the post. Reese Nelson gets the challenge in though to keep us in possession. Kolasinac can he whip it in? He plays the back to Sabellos. Gwendozi go for goal. Malqui. He goes. That that wasn't. That He just passed it back to the keeper there didn't he? That wasn't a strike. Kolasinac now plays it back to Lucas Torreira. Whips the ball. In and it's Malqui on the edge of the box. Plays it back to Sabellos. Back to Malqui. Back to Reese Nelson and loads of space. <sighs> and time is ticking away in the second half. And there we are. Strasbourg nil. Arsenal 2. Our B team essentially has very, very much dominated that game. And put us on 12 points in the group stage for the Europa League. We'll take a look at our group and see how things lie after that. So we, of course, are still five points clear ahead of Feyenoord. Who must have beat Dynamo in the other fixture today or so. Looking very comfortable in the Europa League. We're already qualified. So it is now just a case of making sure we qualify top of our group. Looking forward to the next episode then. When are we going to be coming back? I'm thinking maybe we come back for the Feyenoord Spurs game. And we'll find the Europa League group game. And then Spurs, of course, the London North London derby. But anyway, if you have enjoyed today's video, please consider leaving a like. And if you are enjoying my content, get yourself subscribed. But until next time, take it easy.